or it might spoil. Yes. I want to jump now to another topic which is still related to Tantra and that is to the theory of Microvita. Please tell us what is Microvita? Microvita was first uh, explained by my teacher uh -huh. and um, what he, the, the title he said is uh, um, the mysterious emanation of the cosmic factor. And he said that mysterious is when we don't understand something, mm -hmm. then we call it mysterious. With that idea, it is not that easy for us to understand microvita, but it's supposed to be the minutest uh, particle of life. So micro, small, vita, life, mm -hmm. and that would be plural, vita, or micro vitum or vitum as singular. singular. Uh -huh. So this micro vita will be like the minutest particle of life or basically what creates life. Mm -hmm. It means that micro vita, like a concentration of micro vita will create other beings, will create uh, like millions of micro vita joined together, let's say, will create carbon atoms, which is what we think is the origin of life. So this microvita is something even smaller than that. And your teacher, uh, who is uh, Sri Sri Anandamurti, right. um, he, how do you think he was able to develop this idea? I mean, did it come intuitively? How would, I think that's a fair question. How would you answer that question? Yeah, I, it's a mental investigation, let's say. Uh -huh. The laboratory okay. <laughs> is your mind. Right. And right. mind has capacity to perceive things that are beyond the senses. Mm -hmm. You know, let me add something. For example, how did the yogis uh, discover chakras? You know, when chakras are not a physical thing, right. it came through years and years of practice. Yes. And so, I just want to add on to what you're saying. So, likewise, something like microvita could also be discovered due to years and years of deep uh, practice through like yoga and tantra. Right, exactly. Let mm -hmm. me make an effort to give an idea. Mm -hmm. We are living in this world. So, suppose I'm here, you are here, and there are trees and things around us, right? Okay. And how does this come into the cosmic perspective? Uh -huh. I could uh, make a comparison, like I am here now and in my mind I'm thinking of a man mm -hmm. and this man is riding a horse. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I'm thinking that or I'm dreaming that there is mm -hmm. this horse and there is a man riding it. Okay? All right. That is fruit of my mental creation or my mental imagination. Right. But that man who is riding the horse, for him, from his perspective, he is riding the horse. And the mm -hmm. horse is a reality for him. Exactly. And he is a reality for himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is riding on a field and he sees that field. But coming in my perspective, everything is my imagination. Right. Now, if we think that the whole universe is the imagination of the cosmic mind, mm -hmm. so it's, this cosmic mind is basically thinking us right. and the planets and the whole universe, so everything is within this cosmic mind. So for me, I'm here and I'm seeing this tree and I see you, it's something external to me, but we are both with everything inside this thought of the cosmic mind. Right. Now, mm -hmm. if I can change my perspective from my individual mind to the cosmic mind, it means if I can connect my limited mind with this infinite cosmic mind, Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. then I get all that knowledge that is within the cosmic mind. Whoa, really? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ah. you, you get the kind of the perspective. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. So yeah. in th that's the way that one can know everything. 
mm. by connecting with the cosmic mind. Connecting with the mind that knows everything. That knows everything, yes. And I've heard of that there is positive microvita and there is negative microvita. Okay, this idea of positive microvita and negative microvita has to do with their scope of action. Like the, the, the negative microvita is related more to the uh, more physical things, more crude uh, manifestations of life. Okay. Why are they, that, that's the negative one. Mm -hmm. negative and the positive is more subtle let's say in the human being the negative one will work for the people who know about the chakras will work in the lower chakras and the positive will work in the higher chakras so if the negative let's say the negative makes you more material, more crude, and the positive makes you more subtle, more spiritual. I've also heard of this theory of uh, the Devayanis and the Pratyayanis. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? The Devayanis are collective mm -hmm. forms of microvita. Okay. Let's say that is what uh, people call a luminous body. Yeah. So these are the Devayanis. Now uh -huh. these luminous bodies, uh, they have different expressions. There is one that will encourage people to become spiritual. Mm -hmm. There is one that will encourage people in the direction of music. All right. Uh -huh. yeah. so, but these, so these are different these categories. See, yes. One could make you more spiritual, one could make you uh, more artistic, or... Yes. Um, okay. It's like a being, but it's a being that does not have the solid and liquid factor. Okay. <laughs> Let's say our body mm -hmm. is made of five fundamental factors. Right, right. Solid factor, liquid, luminous, aerial, mm -hmm. and ethereal. So five factors. Mm -hmm. But these devionis, they will not have neither the solid factor nor the liquid factor. Wow. So that's right. why people say luminous bodies. Okay. Let's say that it's a being okay. that doesn't have the, the body like we have, like our body I touch, it's kind of physical, right? Solid. There is solid and there is a, so much liquid in my, yeah. in my body. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is also light and there is also ether and air in my body. Right. So these beings don't have the solid part and the liquid part. Therefore, the most... Uh, uh, the, dense factor that they have is the light. Okay. So, when you see them, you mm. will see them in form of light. <laughs> That's cool. So, it could <laughs> be like a being of uh -huh. light. And what about Pratyayanis? Well, Pratyayanis would be... Because there are other beings okay. that don't have the solid factor, but they do have the liquid factor. Wow, okay. So, yeah. all right. And there are myths of uh, uh, beings that live in water, no? Mm -hmm. Maybe those were these beings that have only the... The liquid factor. The liquid factor. And the other ones. Yeah. The thing is that even Devayonis were known to yogis in the past. Even though, for example, my teacher, Shishi Ananamurti, mm -hmm. he came out with the microvita theory. You know, theories are explanations of things, that right. are phenomena. Mm -hmm. For example, Newton came with the theory of gravity. But it's not that gravity started existing when he... Exactly. When he came up with the theory. Mm -hmm. Neither uh, the perception of gravity was also before that. Of course. Mm -hmm. But he came with a good explanation about the whole thing. Right, right. So these Devayonis, they've been known to yogis. So these microvita were known to yogis. Uh -huh. They knew about it, but they didn't have a theory that put everything together to explain the behavior and explain how it works. Right. So now right. came this microvita theory to explain something that people had perception or perceived before, mm -hmm. but didn't have a good theory how to explain it. Yeah. So that's where okay. the microvita theory comes. 
like Tantra. Tantra was uh, practiced for way before Shiva, yeah. who was supposed to be then the one who made the theory, uh, made the institution and the practices of Tantra yeah. in a package, for example. Yeah, he kind of gave a system. Okay. Yeah. So, and then one, one more question about this, just to maybe help distinguish in, in somebody's mind. Um, because, you know, in, in Tantra, in, in spirituality, things need or should be rational. Right. So, how would you distinguish the Devayanis, Pratayanis, the positive Microvita, the, mi the negative Microvita from things like ghosts, things from like spirits? Um, what's a good way to distinguish those two? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> because well, people mm -hmm. it's in the mind of people okay right like suppose I'm a very religious person yeah okay mm -hmm. and uh, I am very subtle and I can see a uh, luminous body okay all right mm -hmm. so if I do that I, I will think oh it's an angel Right. Okay. Oh, if you're if you're a religious yes. person. Ah, right. okay. But now suppose I'm a superstitious <laughs> person. I say this is a ghost. Oh wow, right? that's so interesting. Okay, now most <laughs> ghosts, mm -hmm. because the people to really perceive a luminous body, you have mm -hmm. to have a more subtle mind. So usually superstitious people will not really uh, come in contact with these luminous beings, but Many times, mm -hmm. these people, what they think are ghosts, are nothing more than their own projection. Right. Okay. It means it's their mind playing with themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they are very concentrated, let's say, due to fear. And yeah. it could be two things. Either just they perceive something and get that imagination. Or they really project it from their mind and create it. Right. So right. their mental creation is the, the ghost. Means one person will think every time that I go by that tree, I see a, a shadow. Yeah. It, it may be that every time he goes so concentrated that he projects that shadow there and he sees it. Mm -hmm. Now, as human beings, okay, even if there is a ghost, mm -hmm. okay, let's say, that is a ghost. But <laughs> what can the ghost do? Oh. <laughs> because if the ghost doesn't have a physical... Maybe we should do a video on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, another, <laughs> it's a completely other subject. But uh -huh. the idea is we don't need to fear existence of ghosts because mm -hmm. most ghosts are just our imagination. So how can the understanding of microvita help human beings? Right. The thing is that the theories that we have today, the atomic theories and uh, or in physics, they don't really explain everything. Yeah. Like, for example, mm -hmm. in chemistry, in pharmacy, uh -huh. people make medicine. And there are situations where one company makes a medicine, another company makes also, and they use the same chemical formula, but one works and the other one doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and so people say, oh, this brand is good, that one is not good. Right. If we ana analyze it uh, through chemistry, it doesn't make sense because the formula is the same. Oh, the same. So that means that the, my knowledge of the formula is not enough to explain everything. So something is missing in my theory, in my formula, that can't explain everything that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. So microvita adds to that. So in microvita theory would be like, there is this chemical formula, mm -hmm. plus there is a certain concentration of microvita. Okay. Okay, let's say the so, uh -huh. because of the difference in concentration of microvita, one formula, both being the same formula, one has more effect than the other. Mm -hmm. So, it's some addition. Okay. Right? okay. So, this will be the benefit that if people understand and research on this theory, they may 
come to a point that they can explain the different phenomena in the world in a better way.